on episode 66 of the Win Me Podcast, Nintendo lightens up. Get it, Jordan? <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> I get it. Okay. Enjoy the show. One of the podcast. My name is Ryan Smith, and as always, I'm with my co-host Jordan Sams, who was supposed to do my part. You see, we've been kind of doing a little switcheroo the past couple episodes, but I think he had an aneurysm or something because he has not been able to get it off the ground. He was flubbing it a little bit, so I thought I'd step in, help him out, and of course, I had to give him just a little bit of just a little bit of crap, just like I would expect him to give me a little crap if I messed it up 25 times in a row. Listen, it was 30 times. We're gonna be Sharing the truth. Make sure you share it correctly. It's so hot, and you're wearing a sweater. What's it? What are you doing? I'm comfortable right now. It, I'm I'm sweating, and I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. I'm sorry that you have body perspiration issues, but you're saying I have bottle bottle. You said I have bottles. Yes, I bottles. got bottles, baby. Bottles on bottles. Bottles in the club. Wait, that's what they say. Is I, that a song? I'm sure that's. That I'm sure that's many song lyrics. I don't have bottles. Oh. If I have bottles, I turn them in and get, like, a nickel for them. Oh, man, yeah. That's how I you have know. a Coca-Cola bottle. Why do you I have like that? an ice cold, because that's one of the Mexicana Coca-Colas. The one, you can buy them at any store? No. no. Kroger has them? No. Yes, they do. No, not this Kroger. I'm pretty sure I no. saw them. They don't, no, there's no, we don't even have glass Cokes at our Kroger. What are you talking about? Really? Did I I've halluc- lived here for years, baby. Did I hallucinate seeing yes. a Hispanic section in Kroger and, in fact, them having Coca-Cola? They definitely don't have Kroger. They have, like, old Alamo okay. taco seasoning. They definitely don't have Mexican Coke at, at our Kroger. Maybe I'm just, maybe I the only Kro- The only one I would... My brother loves the crap, so if, if we had it at Kroger, we would have had had it constantly in our house. Gotcha. So, which, yeah, we don't have it. We don't. All right. I wish we had it there. There's a gas station that has it, or, yeah, yeah, that has it, but that's all I know. Okay. I like Mexican, Mexican Coke. Do you like Mexican Coke? I've had it before, yes. It's delicious. Okay. I didn't know what that meant. But you don't drink uh, cola anymore, so. No, I don't. Mm. Uh just drink the good old water and juice. H2O. That's right. What you been up to? What have I done this week? I feel like it's been forever since we sat down and did this, even though it hasn't It's been, been. less than the amount where we usually do it. That's true. I do want to uh, let you guys know uh, at the top, I'm going to be taking a vacation. So we're recording the podcast a little bit early. So if, you, if we miss some news, I do want to apologize. We'll be back on... Our normal scheduled recording times next week. You excited for your vacation? Yeah, it's hot though. I know I already said that, but it's gonna be just as hot. Yeah, I I don't know if it's gonna bother me or not, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm comfortable right now, even though I'm dressed. I can't in. believe you wear you. It's July and you're oh. wearing a sweater. Well, we are inside. The AC is not on. But I mean, I guess I'm cold. Um, are you having to, do you have blood pressure or blood flow issues? My mom is always cold. No. She has blood flow issues. I think it's honestly because I sleep in a hammock now and there's not any... It's affecting your phys- phys- physiology now? Just in my body temperature, I think. Uh, because there's no... <laughs> That's like one of the most base things about you. Yeah. It's, it's affecting your pH level too. <laughs> I, I think so because it's... There's no, you know how in a bed, there's like circulation and stuff. There's ins- insulation in a bed. I mean. Well, not actual insulation, but you get it. Heat stays in the bed with you. Uh, in my hammock, that is not the case. It, It's weird. So, I get cold. Okay. So okay, why. that's not. What, what, have you been playing anything? That I was... tried playing Mario Sunshine. But for some reason, on both my monitors, it makes it black and white. And so I guess I'm going to buy a AC adapter to HDMI to see if that fixes the problem. Did you did you uh, Google it? You got to get on Yahoo Answers. I didn't go on Yahoo Answers. Maybe that's the case. Maybe I should try that. Uh, but I did Google it, and it seems some people were like, oh, it's just your TV. Buy a new TV. And it's like, I'm not going to buy a new TV. Why? 
Uh, because it's not working. Exactly. And some of the some of the other people are saying that uh, pretty much the TV's not coded for that because they didn't anticipate things like that being plugged up to it. So, I mean, you got those PS Vita looking I know. TVs. They're pieces of crap, but they work. They still work. So I'm using them until they die. So I might just uh, I might do some research and see if a RC to HDMI will give it color. But I don't know if it will or not. But it's only like ten dollars on Amazon. So okay, that's not bad. I guess if you if it doesn't work, will they sh- let you ship it back? What, what, yeah, what? yeah. Just okay. like with that golf thing I bought, I just literally put it back and I opened it up, looked at it, put it up. Didn't like it. Put it back in the box. I don't know what you thought. I don't know. Did you think you were going to like the way it looked? No, I thought it would be tighter and nicer, like the picture, but I guess I set it up wrong or something, and it just didn't, it didn't vibe with me, so I was like, ah, I'm put it back. Of course, it's going to look like a big, dumb golf net in front of your window. It wasn't. It was never going to look good. Yeah, I didn't like it. So, I put it back in the box, hit return on Amazon, and all I had to do is go find the nearest UPS store, and they scanned a little QR code, and I got my money back. So That's good. I guess I can always do that with the... Uh, the old, uh, what is it? What is it called? The uh, HDMI to RC adapter thing, if I don't like it. What is it. RC adapter? Like RC Cola? Yeah. I I just can't remember for some reason what they're called. The colored cables? Oh, the you're talking about the... No, I A- can't remember. AC. No, is that's it? air conditioning. Okay, I don't know. RGB? Whatever they're called. I know. I, I, I would have told you Coax the name cables. of them. No, that's for cable. Literally. It doesn't matter. Literally five minutes ago. But now that I actually have to, you know, I'm supposed to know it, I can't. Exactly. Or I don't. So, yeah. So, I'm probably going to get one of those so I can play Mario Sunshine in color. Because I tried playing a little bit in black and white, and it is depressing. Wow. Yeah. No one wants to play Mario in black and white. <laughs> it's so boring. Uh, I also picked up some Dr. Mario this week. Uh, and played it for maybe 30 minutes and then uninstalled it because it was very boring. Uh, it was very boring? Yeah, I just couldn't, didn't like it. What didn't you like about it? Uh, the gameplay, and that's about it. I liked everything else the about it. The gameplay. Yeah, I didn't like the gameplay. I liked the way it looked, but I didn't like the actual core gameplay mechanics of it. So, just, just wasn't feeling it. <laughs> Always has the most in-depth reviews over here. I uh, like the gameplay. Wait, no. You didn't like the gameplay. Okay. I am literally the exact opposite. Oh. I think the gameplay is very good. I think that the app, uh, the application, is Dr. Mario World, for those of you it, uh, wondering, it did come out. Um, I think the gameplay is good. I think it has some interesting mechanics. But I think that the game itself runs very poorly. Um, it crashes a lot. It looks fine. It doesn't look bad. I do like the way it looks, but its performance is terrible. It won't get on the internet or it won't get online very well. It runs very poorly. Similar to how their Switch Online service um, does not work very well. Yeah, I also just I just couldn't get into it. I guess I don't like those kind of games. I used to be a big Bejeweled person and then played a lot of Peggle. And so... Well, this is... This is Peg up or hardcore gamers. Yeah. Just, gamers with a Z. I know. I'm not, yeah, I'm not a gamer with a Z anymore, I guess. Sadly. Uh, I did play some Artifact this week, you know. Gotta be one of those Artifact people. One of the ten people, maybe, if that, they're still playing this game. Uh, that was enjoyable. Still trying out some different decks and, you what know. Kind of, what kind of decks you trying? I was play This week I played a red-green ramp deck. So what it does is it just... Gives you extra mana to use each turn, and then you just make your boys really big, and you attack. So okay. You, you kind of just like swarm the field with a bunch of energy early game, and then just kind of buff them up, and then just swing big. And how'd so, that How'd that work out for you? It went okay. I won some, I lost some. So. When they should go uh, make a documentary of going to the mind of an artifact player. Oh my gosh, that'd be crazy. I, I, I have not played that game uh, at all uh, in the past week. I just yeah. haven't. I haven't played a lot of games. Um, I played uh, I played a lot of Apex and I played a lot of uh, Dota Underlord, but that's um, that's it for the you know games that I played a lot of. Uh, I really really like Apex. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this season. Uh, Ryan and I played, like he said, a pretty good bit this week, and I think we played a lot. Uh, 
individually. I play a lot individually too. Yeah, I think I've played a hundred and something matches this season already. So I played a thousand. I mean, you've no. probably played more than me. You've had more time on your hands. <laughs> I played a thousand, so I'm better than you. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. We I mean, played. Uh, we played together last night for a while. And uh, Jordan got off, and I continued to play for about an hour, and I won. Nice. Like the next game. Of course you did. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't. It wasn't the next game, I but I but won. Yeah. Uh, soon after Jordan hopped off, um, I don't know. I feel like I play more aggressively or something when I'm solo queuing, or yeah. I don't know, but I don't think I play as well um, with friends. But I do like playing with friends because obviously you can talk and. Kind of goof off and and stuff. What uh, what rank are you right now? I am silver three. Okay, I'm believe. silver. I'm silver one, creeping up on gold four. Nice. Really, really enjoying it. Um, I actually have been playing a lot of Pathfinder. Um, I know that used to be uh, who Jordan played. Um, I think he's been playing a lot of, a lot of Bangalore recently. Yeah, right? I've, I've had some Bangalore challenges, and also I I don't know, just something I saw that I had a Bangalore challenge the other day, and I kind of just. I picked her so I could do the challenge, so I could get the XP, and then it just kind of clicked, and we ended up winning that match I was in, and it just kind of made sense for me to play her. And so now I've kind of picked her up, and then I went and danced around with Lifeline and goofed off with Mirage a little bit, and so I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what home is for me. I like Watson, though. She's interesting, but it definitely feels like she... I haven't figured out how I want to play her, Versus how she should be played, sort of a thing. So, I, I mean, she has. A, I feel like she has kind of the same problem as Gibraltar and Caustic. Caustic as um, this, the game is very quick. You want to keep moving. You know, you want to third party people. You want to get to the next circle. Man, that those new circles hurt so much. But her, those three, um, I think in particular Caustic and Watson. You know, you really want to kind of bunker down. Yeah, just kind of like, I hope somebody comes through here. Yeah. The nature of it, you can play, you know, proactive or um, more bunker, I guess, style. No matter what hero you're playing, unlike in Overwatch where the um, the abilities of the hero are such a massive role. I mean, they're important in this game, but it's not to, to the same degree as a game like Overwatch. But, but it it is, um, in my opinion, easier to get across the map if you're playing Bangalore or... Wraith or Pathfinder, you know, or Octane, some of these quicker characters, and then, um, or well, Lifeline, uh, obviously, can aid them very well, and she can support them and support herself very well, whereas the other characters, they can't really uh, add as much to the team, in my opinion. Yeah, I'd say they're good in very select firefights. There was a couple matches last night that Watson, I threw down her alt, and it was useful in that in that particular... Oh, shit. I, I think her ult is good. I do. I think her ult is good. You know, and so, in some aspects, in very instances, uh, her alt is good, and... I kind of think that uh, the, these characters are also good end game. I will say. Yeah, you know, Gibraltar Shield, different stuff like that. Cossack. <laughs> we got messed up by a Cossack alt the other day. He threw it into a house. Or no, in around like around a corner... And we just kind of got called in it just by surprise. Uh, so I think if they keep tweaking the tanks in this game, they'll figure out a way to make them really viable. Uh, I don't. No? No. Okay. It's a battle royale. You're constantly moving. I don't think I the quote-unquote tanks are going to be good. Not like the other characters. You need speed and, mo and momentum. That's true. They are, t they are uh, big old boys. I mean, especially those... Uh, you're talking about big old boys, and their hitboxes are also a problem. I know that uh, Gibraltar and Caustic both got that 20% uh, health increase, or whatever you want to call it, fire. Yeah, and they got damage that, decrease. Yeah. So, but they're still really big and really easy to shoot. Uh, when uh, last night we just kind of rushed this Gibraltar, and he was kind of dancing in and out of his uh, um, his bubble, but he can't shoot us either. So we just kind of took him down pretty easily and won the game. So that. I just don't think that the t a tank uh, like character is ever going to be top tier in a battle royale type game, especially in Apex. It's co coming from someone who is in, in no way a professional. This is coming from a layman in the most layman of ways. Yeah. So I am curious because Watson is so 
out there as far as how she plays mechanically. Part of me does think that she is the best of those three. Just because I think her ult is really good. It is really good. And her passive is good. Yeah, you can just... One ultimate accelerant, you got an ult. Like, there yeah, it is. Yeah, that's literally the, so, her, her passive. Which is awesome. Uh, I think that... I think they're going in a good direction with Apex. I'm. Oh, yeah. I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, I'm excited to see what they're going to do for Season 3. <laughs> I mean, let's... Let's just keep it. Let's keep it in season two. Well, season yeah. three is three months away. That's true. And I'm maybe midway through the season, I'll end up buying the battle pass. Oh yeah, that's right. You haven't bought the battle pass. Nope, still haven't. I mean, do you? Don't if you don't think you want it, don't buy it. I mean, there are some things that I'd like to get in it, uh, but mostly my main goal right now is to become an apex predator. Oh man, he's like, gonna become an apex predator. It just sounds cool. It looks cool. You know. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't see that happening for myself. I, I, I don't think it'll happen, but you know, it may, maybe, maybe. I'll be happy if I get into high gold. Yeah. I don't think you can drop out of your rank either. I don't know. I kind of want to try. <laughs> I mean, if, the reason, I, I mean, have you never, did you lose, uh, yeah. RP as soon as you got in the oh, silver no. the next time? No. No, you, you do. You lo- what I'm saying is, after you got into silver, yeah. did you gain RP the next match? Oh, no. I've definitely gone back down. Oh, yeah, I've lot. gone down. Yeah. But I guess you don't. So I don't think you go back down. Okay. Uh, okay. I guess you can let us know if uh, you guys have uh, have gone back down a rank, but I don't think you can from what I can tell. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing I've been up to this week besides working is uh, I watched some new animes. I watched, uh, what is it? I think it's Are We Lost or something. It's about four girls that I guess are on their trip for school and somehow they get washed upon a deserted island and they have to survive. It's one of those, it's probably going to be one of those short animes because each episode is only like 12 minutes and 30 seconds or something like that. And so that seems like a okay anime sort of thing. And then I've finished uh, Archer, which isn't anime, but felt was worth mentioning. Oh, you finished it? Well, My sorry, I, fi- I finished season eight. And I'm, okay. I'm going to start season nine. How many seasons are there right now? Nine. Okay. On Hulu, yeah. Does that include the new one? Yeah, the new the I think it's called Danger Island or something. That's no, Archer ninety nine. Archer nineteen ninety nine is the new one. Then no, the new one is not on Hulu. Okay. Okay, it's not on Hulu. So season season ten is not on Hulu. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. I guess they're probably coming out with that next year on Hulu probably. or so. Yeah. Uh, I've been watching It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. They came out with season 13. I think it's season 13. Finally, um, season 12 kind of had this big emotional, like legitimately emotional ending, which is kind of weird because that they don't really do that on this show. Um, and then they kind of got right back in it and it's, on, on episode one. It was great. Uh, I love this show so much. If you like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, for, um, I guess spoilers, very slight spoilers, for some reason, uh, Mac decides to get just incredibly ripped, and they're they're like, "Why? Why? Why did you? Why? Why did you do that?" And he says, "You know, uh, I just I thought it could work, man, for the plan." And everyone's just telling him, "We don't. We, no one asked you to do this. Why did you do this?" And it, I feel like it's kind of uh, I don't know. It's kind of putting the fact uh, not no one asked him to do it for the gang, but also. Um, no one asked him to do it for the show. So it feels kind of like this dude just got, you know, just put in months and months of work for literally nothing. And that's, that's the joke, <laughs> is that he got ripped for in his late 30s for nothing. <laughs> so it's, it's great. I love that show so much. That's funny. I started watching it a little bit. I think I'm on five, season five. Sorry, not five. Oh, my goodness. Season one, like five episode five or six or something. He hasn't even gotten to where uh, Frank is at. Yeah, I, I can't don't wait know. to you meet Frank. I don't even know who that is. I kind of paused the show and like went off on the show last night. Ryan's like, they're all a holes. It's just how they are. And I'm like, okay, I guess I can accept. Yeah, that. Jordan said something uh, like, um, "I don't like this guy. I don't like. I don't like that guy." And I'm just telling him, "Yeah, they're bad people, Jordan. They're, 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 you're not gonna like them. They're bad people." I was like, I guess you gotta gotta accept it. You know. It's like it's like Seinfeld. People, it's just a, it's a show about bad people. They're not, or they're worse than people on Seinfeld. I mean, I'll give you a hint. Uh, I'll give you you know a little taste of something that happens. One of them, I can't, it might be more than one of them, but they pretend to be crippled, 
to get discounts and stuff. They pretend to have de degenerative uh, the diseases. They pretend to be handicapped. Yeah, they're they're horrible, horrible God. people. Okay. They're terrible. <laughs> I think that's what I mean, and it's hilarious. I think that's what I hate about. And I I, I guess I had to realize like they're not real. <laughs> no, they're not real. Yeah. And they, they, oh man, I'm so excited because the guy who plays Mac is going to be in a new show. We talked about this um, on. They talked about ID three, but he's going to be. In a show about video development, video game development, but it's going to be on Apple TV. Oh yeah, I saw that. So I'm really excited for that. I may have to get Apple TV just to watch that. Dang, I think all you need is like a little box or something, like a little. You can just get a box and then plug it into something, and then it makes it an Apple TV. I don't no, think you. That's not an Apple. Apple TV, it's going to be a, a like an app or something, I think. Oh, okay. Then I that that shows how much I understand of the Apple ecosystem. I mean, there is an Apple TV box, but I don't think. Oh, okay. Maybe it is just an app. They, That'd be I'm cool. sure they want everyone to be able to watch it. Probably. I'm sure they want you to watch it on your computer, on your TV, on your smartphone. Sure. I mean, maybe it will be on Apple only, in which case it'll suck. I think you'll probably. But I'm not buying an Apple it. TV. Okay. I guess you could probably download it on your PS4. Hopefully, hopefully. So, also, uh, I played a little bit of Dota Underworlds. Um, I got to. I wanted to uh, look. Uh, tell y'all the rank that I got to. It's uh, and now I'm blanking. It's something three. Hold on, let me. I gotta look this up. It's it's gonna bother me. Dota Under Lords Platinum three or do they have special names for it? They have they have their own names. Okay, so. Okay, so I am an, I'm like half, okay, I am an Enforcer 3, and that's 1, 2, that's 4 ranks up. Um, so it's kind of like an Overwatch, it would be like Overwatch is Platinum, or Platinum, I think. Nice. So not, not too bad. I'm, ho I'm hoping to get to Smuggler, but I don't think I'm going to have time to do that before vacation. So I'm probably just going to play Resident Evil uh, 2. I'm gonna like get a haircut, uh, pack, and then play Resident Evil 2 for the rest of the day until I think I'm gonna leave around six or seven today. Okay. Um, I have my switch out here. Jordan was uh, pointing that out before we started the podcast. I'm, I'm just making sure I have some games to download. Uh, games downloaded so I can play. We've got like a six or seven hour drive um, tonight, so I want to be ready for that. Smart. Make sure you queue up some podcasts, too. Oh, yeah. I downloaded seven episodes of Lore, uh, and there's this new podcast on Vice. I can't think of what it's called, but it's called... It's about extreme situations. One of them is about a firefighter who got caught starting fires. Huh. Uh, one of them is about a woman who survived a plane crash, I believe. So, things like that. Very strange okay. and extreme circumstances nice so i'm excited to cue those or to listen to those that's awesome i don't like driving but i do enjoy trips just because i can binge a lot of podcasts yeah i like i like taking trips i don't like driving i'm hoping i can guilt my brother into driving yeah because see uh, one of my few uh tickets i got on the way uh we're gonna be driving through the area so i'm like oh man oh it hurts i can't drive through here man you gotta do it and then i just won't get out of the car for the rest of the time and he'll have to drive the whole way all you gotta do is just be like, "Hey man, can you hold these keys?" And then just get in the back and be like, "Well, you you gotta drive now." I mean, yeah, he definitely couldn't just hand them back to me. Nah. No, I think uh, we'll probably split it half one half. That's what we usually do. Probably. Uh, yeah. Oh, I've have been I've been reading. Uh, I finished those two comics I was talking about. Yeah. The Superman and the Lois Lane one, both really good. Especially the Superman one, I really enjoyed it. He's searching for this little girl. And it is what I'm, I was hoping for. It's, it's a more human experience. Superman is talking about how he's not immortal. Um, he's talk, he has to do this thing. And it, it was like, it's almost impossible. And he says, I have to do it. I have to do it. And he does it because he's Superman. But at the same time, he kind of says, it was luck. I I could any any other day, I could have died. It was luck. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I, like I really, that. really, really um, like those more human Superman stories. That reminds me that I saw on Instagram that there's going to be apparently a Batman, a new Batman Superman story coming out in August. Ooh, I love Batman Superman stories. 
So apparently it's supposed to. I don't know what it all is all about. Like the Kissing. background. Hmm? Kissing. Finally. No, that's that's the Batman and Superman anime. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Busan. All I saw in the picture is it looked like they were going up against the whole DC universe or a bunch of people, and it looked like they had Joker smiles on their face. But I just looked at it for like 10 seconds before the podcast, and so I'm not sure. I'll have to show you the picture, and maybe you can decipher that's it. That's interesting. Maybe you can decipher it more than uh, more than I can. Yeah, and then I played a little bit of Persona 4. Still enjoying that. Uh, Octopath, still enjoying that. It's kind of my normal weekly things that I'm playing. And uh, like I said, I've been, oh, I don't know if I've said it, but I started Resident Evil 2. Um, really enjoyed that. Put a few hours into that. The game is disgusting and beautiful in all the right ways. I cannot wait to play more of that. Um, it is a good looking game. I almost bought that during the Steam Summer Sale, but I didn't. Any reason? Uh, I just thought of all the, the list of games that I haven't played slash should play slash need to get back to playing. What, what, did you buy anything? I bought that weird space Terraria game, and then I got The Witcher. I thought you said you weren't going to buy that. No, I bought it. I don't know why, but I did. Uh, but I did buy I did buy a redeemable game. I bought The Witcher 2. So, okay. So uh, now yeah, I, I bought The Witcher 2. I bought Half-Life 1 and 2. Uh, I bought Resident Evil 4. Nice. And I bought Divinity Original Sin. So okay. I spent like 20 bucks. Not bad. I got four or five games, so That's I'm good. pretty happy. Nice. Also, I was on the winning team, and I was hoping to get a free Steam wishlist game. I wasn't one of the lucky ones. Oh, you were on Team Corgi too? Of course, they were winning. Why would I not choose that? Exactly, yeah. I, I was on Team Corgi as well. I didn't get nothing from it, though. I, I bought a bunch of those. Um, they had kind of this points thing. I think I had 600 points. Yeah. Uh, 6,000, excuse me. And I was thinking to myself, oh, man, I, does that mean I can buy a new game or something? No. No, you, you can get... just buy some Corgi emotes. Yeah. I was, I was like, sure. I'll... I bought 6,000 points worth of Corgi emotes. There you go for when we all stop texting and just communicate through Steam chat. <laughs> With Corgi emotes. <laughs> exactly. Well, it depends on what team you have. So, you mean, that, that's true. Can, wait, can, Corgi, can Corgis communicate with tortoises? And I don't think so. Oh, dang. So you can only communicate with their own kind? That's right. Corgi, Corgi. That's how it's meant to be anyway. Of course. So... There's some new games coming out this week, and we're going to tell you about them. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is out for the Switch on July 19th. You're going you're gonna to play that? Uh, there's like a 70% chance I might get it. There's a lot of games coming out for the Switch that I want to play, and also a lot of games on the Switch already that I want to play. But for some reason, I'm, I'm going to have to buckle down. I'm, gonna have a, I'm having a hard time beating games on the Switch as of late for some reason, and I want to buckle down, and I want to, I want to beat these games... And then I want to move on to the next ones because I've liked so many of them, but I'm taking too long to beat them. That's kind of me, but mostly I have a pro controller now. I got it for a sweet deal, like 40 bucks. Don't know if I'm into that on the podcast, but I, I have one now. It's super awesome. Um, and yeah, I need to show my Switch more love. It kind of just sits in its dock and waits for me, and I never show it love. So maybe Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 will get me on that train also this next game is pretty interesting it's called don't even think for ps4 it's out now it's a werewolf survival battle royale game what yeah what does that mean what are those words you just said okay so it was called don't eat it's called don't even think even think okay. it's a battle royale game that's free it's out for ps4 and it's werewolves but it's also battle royale correct yes it confused me, but it's free, so I'm going to download it and see what's up. Okay. It's it's like six gigs or whatever. I didn't type it in the notes, so I assumed you did. Um, but I think I did. I think I saw it on yeah. some... I didn't even know what it was. I just saw yeah, it. Yeah. I, I, I was Googling it, uh, and I was like, don't even think. Game? And then it was like, this werewolves. This kind of like... Battle Royale. Yeah. This, these werewolves look kind of like... The whale, the werewolves from Underworld. The Bloodborne. Oh, okay, but nice. I guess that's interesting. If you need a new battle royale game in your life, I'm gonna download it and try it out. So, cause it's free, why not? Also, Byakugo. Well, sorry, Bakugo. Bakugo. <laughs> uh, Bakugo. I think you combine Bakugan and I don't know and that tabletop 
Um, yeah, Beyblade. No, not Bay. The uh, the Beyblade that's not Beyblade. Byakugan. Is it Bakugo? Bakugo. Wait. Ba- it's Byakugan. No, Byakugan is is Neji's ability in Naruto. Oh gosh, that's true. What is it called? It doesn't matter what it's called. Uh, it kind of does. Bakugo is what this is. The character from uh, My Hero Academia is going to be coming to Jump Force sometime in summer 2019. That's- I thought he was. No, that's all it says. It doesn't give us a release okay, date. Okay, okay, okay. It's uh, I, I, watched, why I, moved it I watched. Games. I watched the trailer. I put it. You know, I looked it up. It just says summer, so probably by the end of July, hopefully. I mean, there's no, there's no telling. We still haven't gotten Pokemon Masters, and that's supposed to come out summer 2019. That's true. Like we said earlier in the show, Doctor Mario is out. Sorry, Doctor Mario World is out now for iOS and Android. Yeah, I think they came out last week. I think we talked about it last week. Uh, also, you're gonna get Donkey Kong Three. And Wrecking Crew on the Switch as a part of the Nintendo Switch Online thing this month. That's going to be available July 17th. Also coming along with that is going to be the Rewind feature on the Switch on the same day. We hope you enjoyed those new games for this week. Now we're going to be moving on to some news. Time for some news. News. Okay, so thank you GameSpot for this article. There's been more Pokemon Sword and Shield news i don't think i like it you don't think you like what the giga gigantic maxing what why i think it's good i think it's kind of stupid well explain what it is and then explain why you don't like it okay so for those of you that don't know in the pokemon and the gen 8 pokemon games that are upcoming they're gonna be dynamaxing where the boy the pokemon get big in the gym battles, and now there's going to be this new type of Dynamaxing. It's going to be special. They're going to be, it's going to be called Gigant- Gigantamaxing, uh, and pretty much what it's going to do is it's going to change. Instead, of, they're going to be huge, but they're also going to change their physical appearance. So it's going to make them look even crazier. One of the little Pokemon whose name is Alacream, uh, instead of being like a little whipped cream looking ish Pokemon. It's gonna be like a huge tower of cake for her uh Gigantamax <laughs> transformation sort of a thing. And it looks like it's gonna be uh you can also capture these Gigantamax Pokemon in Max Raid battles. For those of you that are curious. But I just don't like the way it looks. I just think it looks like the Dynamaxing was cool, but then it's now it's like Gigantamax and it's like, well what's gonna do next like but gigantic but okay so dynamaxing is dumb and uncreative it's just making them big this is actually creative though because it changes what they look like i guess that's true i yeah, guess i'm assuming they probably gain extra abilities and stuff too my i guess the thing that i'm curious about is not that, i'm not i don't know if, i don't see i don't know if dynamaxing i just think it, it is kind of dumb and uncreative quote unquote I don't know. It could change the game in an incredibly good way. I'm very excited for this game. I just wanted to say that I think that making the Pokemon big is the uncreative side of this, and changing their forms is definitely more interesting. Now, I will say that I am still excited for this game. I just want to... I guess part of me wants to know how these two transformations are going to impact the gameplay itself. Uh, Because if you're just going up against... I guess you can only do these special transformations in certain areas. You wouldn't just be able to run around and be like, here's my big old Pikachu. No, you can only do it in certain places. So I guess when I, you know, do a flow chart of my thoughts like that, it makes sense that this isn't a terrible idea. But so what What, what specifically about the Gigantamax thing did you not like? Well... I just think that some t- some of the Pokemon are gonna look really stupid. They probably are. But you know, but ho- this crow looks dope. It does look really cool. The uh, it's uh, what's the name of this co- this bird thing? Uh, Ro- Rolic? No, no, that's Rolic- the- Rolic- is um <clears throat> they 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 did introduce um Rolicoli, um Duraladon, uh, and Alcremy. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Alchemy is the uh, whipped cream looking Pokemon that people are undoubtedly gonna do terrible things to on the internet. Yeah. So, also, what we get to do in this trailer, 
That was a weird sentence. Yes. <laughs> that was a terrible sentence. Uh, we get to see two new gym leaders. The first one's name is Bay, who's a fighting expert, exclusive to Pokemon Sword. And then Shield players will get Alistair, the ghost type gym leader. So a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people are gonna choose uh, Shield now, just just because of that gym leader, because the gym leader looks cool. <laughs> so I'm excited. Uh, it is. I'm gonna get Pokemon Shield, and it'll be fun to fight against a ghost type gym leader. I'm. I, I want this game to be out already. It's almost here though. It's almost. Here. I don't know if there's ever been a ghost type gym leader. Uh, there's no. I don't think there has been because I was thinking. I was thinking that myself, and then I realized... I know that there was an Agatha, but she's uh, not a gym leader. She's a member of the Elite Four. True. There might be. I don't know. Though. There's some of those Pokemon games that either... There's a couple I didn't play, and then there's some that I played that it's been 10 I plus think, years ago. I think there was one maybe in black and white, but I'm not... My memory uh, doesn't serve me well on that. Also, that uh, that Corgi Pokemon, Yamper, the electric uh, type, is going to have an ability called Ball Fetch. And if, so, uh, if you throw a Pokeball at a wild Pokemon but don't capture it, Yampers is going or Yamper is going to fetch the first one you throw, um, unless it's already holding an item. So, I think that's a pretty neat little ability. Sometimes it's annoying to uh, just obviously you're wasting Pokeballs, and it's always been a weird thing, you know, just to go pick it up. So I guess they're kind of putting the pseudo mechanic, pseudo mechanic, um, a mechanic where you kind of kind of go get to pick it up, I guess, but. Only the first one. They still want you to go buy all those Pokeballs. Yeah, so uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield is going to come out on November 15th. If you needed a reminder for some reason, it is going to be awesome. I'm excited to see what else they're going to announce for this. Because it's it's going to be definitely, it's going to get a bunch of new players in. going to bring a bunch of old players back in. And I'm definitely more excited for this game than I was uh, Sun and Moon. Most definitely. Up next, good news for all you Batman Arkham Knight collection boys and girls out there. IGN is telling us that they're going to re-release the Rocksteady games this September. Which, I'm excited. No, I'm not, actually. I, I mean, I'm excited that a new generation of people will get to play these games. I'm not going to pick them up personally, but... I actually adore Batman Arkham Asylum and Batman Arkham City. But I don't think I'm going to pick it up. If I was going to pick it up, I would just pick up the one that has just those two. This is going to come with Batman. Uh, it's going to come with all three of the quote-unquote rock-steady Batman games. It's not going to come with the Batman Arkham BR. And it's not going to come with uh, Arkham Origins. Which, despite you know having millions of uh, sales, they continue to treat like a red-headed stepchild. Yeah, exactly. Over... Uh... From guys at Rocksteady, he said, Quick info for players who have been asking, Batman Arkham Collection is coming to Europe in September, and that includes the Earth 2 Dark Knight skin. For the first time, it's going to be available outside of North America. Early next year, the skin will be released as a free download for everyone who owns Batman Arkham Knight on PS4 Worldwide. So this doesn't say that it's coming to North America, but, I mean, I guess we can kind of assume from that. Yeah. I'd say it's probably going to come to North America. Oh, yeah. Soon. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely going to come to North, North America. Is the, is the biggest audience. So, good news for all the people that enjoy Batman out there. I know I really enjoyed playing those games uh, when they were out. And they, they're they great. The first two are so good. So good. Oh, my gosh. They're probably both in my top 20 games of all time. Even if you don't like Batman or Super, it's a, just a good game to play. Oh, they're it's amazing. A, they're it's so a good, good story. They're uh, so good. They're so, um, you know, traversing the uh, the asylum, for instance, and upgrading your, your abilities. It's really a Metroidvania. Exactly. Yeah. Ryan told me that the other night, and I was like, whoa, that's true. Yeah, 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 definitely. It was. It's definitely an enjoyable experience. I recommend... Anybody that hadn't played these games or you know somebody that likes Batman, tell them about this. Get them to play these games because they're awesome. Oh, they're amazing. Uh, going from one incredibly relevant IP to another, Torak is getting a new game. And it looks a little different than the last time we saw him. This is uh, going to be coming from Coach Haku. He's get Torak is getting a... I don't even know what to call this. It's What would you call this? <sighs> 
Okay, first off, it's cubes, and it's it's like a cartoon style Torah game that looks cute in the sense that it's cartoonish. It's titled Torah Escape from Lost Valley. Uh, yes, it is. It's coming to Steam on July 25th, but it's uh, it's definitely not like the original Torah games at all. It's uh, chibi esque. If I had to give it a, you know, in the, like in the art style, yeah, sure. Apparently, this was one of the six finalists from last year's Universal Game Dev Challenge. Uh, it was a contest launched during the 2018 uh, GDC, which challenged small teams of Unity developers to create games based on iconic Universal owned properties. The contest's $150,000 grand prize uh, went to developer G-Banga for the one-on-one -on -one strategy game Voltron Cubes of Al Alcarion, which is also coming uh, to Steam on the same day, July the 25th. And even though the uh, game, the Torah game did not win, Pillow Pig Games, like Chibi Take, they call it Chibi in here too, so Take on Turk, it's also getting a release. Huh. Well, for those of you that are Turok fans, check it out. Yeah, they're saying that this is uh, also going to be more based on the 1954 like roots or the origins of the character, not the uh, the the comics from the 90s or the video games from the 90s. Okay. So yeah, this looks it looks cute. That's definitely um, there's not going to be any big huge rifles or uh, laser guns or anything like that. So, um, I would I would look this up real quick. Do a quick Google image search of uh of this game. Taruk Escape from the Lost Valley. Or excuse me. It's Escape from Lost Valley. No V. Yeah, it definitely it's not a universe that I ever took time to experience, but I know. liked Taruk as a kid. I didn't play much of it most of the time. Uh, I spent watching other people play it. My mom did not want me playing it because I was really young when these games came out, and she was super protective. So, yeah, <laughs> another game she didn't want me playing was Mortal Kombat, and we are getting, a, I guess, another DLC character, um, according to uh, Gamespot. Apparently, another one teased uh, Sindel. I have no idea who that is. I think it's someone's mother, probably. Maybe. I'm not sure. I, I'm not versed on my Mortal Kombat lore either. Uh, I have been enjoying. Well, not in a couple weeks, but I, when I did play it, I enjoyed Mortal Kombat 11. It was good. Yeah, Ed Boon, um, one of the big boys over at Netherrealm, tweeted out a, a picture of the character Sindel, I guess, with the uh, caption, Seven Deadly Sindels, hashtag Mortal Kombat 11. Huh, well, she looks cool. Uh, I don't know anything more about her other than the fact that she's Coming to the game. You gonna play any more Mortal Kombat 11? I want to get back into it. I need to finish the story mode. I know it's good. Uh, there's a very small part of me that wants to get mediocre at a fighter, and then I would, I would love to get good, but I'm so busy playing uh, playing Apex, Apex. and uh, Dota that I'm not. And then, and then you know I gotta I actually gotta play Dota 2 or League of Legends. So I I don't know, but I, I at least do want to play the story mode. Yeah, the game is very beautiful, similar to uh, I was talking about uh, Resident Evil Two. Um, the game is beautiful, but also gross. This is kind of the same way. Yeah, I've always I've always enjoyed fighting games, and I've talked about it time and time again on the show. That maybe if I just stop doing everything else in my life besides working, I I could just play fighting games. But you got to get a fighting stick. And there's one on my Amazon wish list. I thought about getting it because when I when I when I do play fighting games, I kind of grip the controller too tight, and it kind of hurts my knuckles. I always worry about breaking the controller when I play fighting games. Also, I might have, I, might, I might have talked this about, about this in the podcast, but up until recently, I was using the stick. I did not realize you were supposed to use the D pad on a on the game pad on the on the controller. Mm -hmm. I was using the the analog sticks. Oh, okay. That you're not supposed to do, apparently. I didn't know that. I just figured that you could. It was either or. And it's definitely way easier with the gamepad. Okay. With the uh, with the D-pad. Good to know. So next time you play, 
a fighting game, uh, you'll know that. My brother really likes fighting games. Uh, he's been trying to get me to play with him, so maybe I'll I'll kind of jump in there. Um, yeah. His roommate plays a lot of Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, that game is awesome. It is. That game is beautiful. And, you know, I own so many fighting games, so I probably... Um, a couple. Yeah. No, I own a few. I own uh, Street Fighter Five. I actually played a lot of Street Fighter Five, um, but... As far as recently, I got um, um, Smash Ultimate, which I played. I have played a lot of, and as soon as Banjo Kazooie comes out, I'll probably pour another twenty or thirty hours into it. Um, I actually played that recently. Still, really love that game, and then Mortal Kombat and Dragon Ball Fighters. So yeah, fighting games are cool. I suck at them. Maybe I'll try to be good one day. I don't know. Maybe so. So keep an eye out. We'll definitely let you know when she comes out. All the way. This, uh, this next one's all you. Okay. It's 100%. not opening for me. That's a problem. Okay. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Cuphead. Cuphead. Let's go. Cuphead is getting a show on Netflix, baby. And it's going to be called The Cuphead Show. What? This is crazy. Have you beat that game? Okay. I've played, I've, I've gotten a good way through it. So hard. I need to get back to it. I've, every time I turn on my computer, it's just staring at me. Like, you idiot. You couldn't beat me. And I break down and I cry. And then I turn on a watch and I punish myself by playing Overwatch. That explains so much. So much. I still haven't played this game, but I don't I don't know if I'm going to. It, it just doesn't seem like it's my game to play. So, uh, back to the show, though. Uh, it's really, it's amazing. It's gorgeous. But Netflix and King Features are entering into a partnership uh, with the uh, to make the show the Cuphead show. Uh, it's going to, quote, expand on the characters in the world from the game, and it will feature, quote, unique misadventures. Um, it's going to have, uh, have Chad and Jared Mo uh, Moldenhauer as the executive producers, uh, who they were the people who made the game. Um, this game is kind of blown up. Or this property is kind of blown up. Um, it's gonna have some of the people who made, or oh, the the studio that helped make Popeye, wow. which is very interesting because that kind of goes back to uh, obviously Cuphead was inspired by these very old cartoons, so it kind of, it's kind of going full circle with that. That's really cool. I enjoy Popeye. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a classic. Uh, co-creator Chad Moldenhauer uh, said, "Quote: Jared and I grew up on a steady diet." of hand-animated classics. Some of our favorite memories together are intertwined with early Disney, Oob Iwerks, and Fleshner Studios. These cartoons are a huge part of the reason Cupheads came to exist, and the thought of our little animated adventure becoming like a cartoon of its own is surreal and wonderful. We can't think of better partners to be, uh, better partners than King Features and Netflix, and are so excited for Cuphead fans and new audiences alike to discover the world of the Inkwell Isles, as envisioned by the talented team at Netflix Animation, end quote. Apparently, uh, King Features has also noted that, quote, uh, This announcement marks the first long-form animated series production for King Features since announcing the strategy to build character franchises across multiple platforms, including television, digital video, licensing, and social media, end quote. Um... And <laughs> Destructoid mentions that uh, they wouldn't be surprised to see Cuphead in Smash Ultimate. I kind of agree. I kind of want him in Smash now. I would like to see, you know, Cuphead as a character and then maybe Mugman as a skin. So if we could just get Cuphead and Leon or I, I want a Resident Evil character in Smash. Just want a Resident Evil. I was playing Resident Evil 2 and I was thinking how many cool different moves and uh, strategies you could use with Claire or Leon, or Chris, or freaking, what's his name, Wesker. I just, I just want a Resident Evil character in Smash. Please! I mean, I know, I'm glad that Banjo-Kazooie are in Smash, but I don't want Dragon Quest boys, because they're just sword boys. I want a Resident Evil character, so badly. But this show looks awesome. Um, look up the uh, artwork. Um, definitely, uh, looks really, really cool. Um, the only thing we have really is just to show um, 
Poster? Poster, I guess you'd call it, yeah. So I looked it up. It looks very cool. I will say that it, I do like the art style of Cuphead. Oh my gosh, yes. Even if you don't like the game, even if you think it's too hard or something, the art style is amazing. All hand-drawn, hand-animated. It's incredible. Nice. So moving on to an article I'm excited to talk about. PC Gamer, thank you for these words. Okay, so a third of the Cyberpunk 2077 digital pre-orders on PC have been on GOG. For those of you that don't know, GOG is owned by CD Projekt Red. I think this is awesome. Uh, so, they took CD Projekt Red took to Twitter and said, quote, thank you for your support. It, it's breathtaking. End quote. They, uh, obviously, you can pre-order this game on Amazon and Steam and tons of other places, but... In February, you know, they, we heard that GOG wasn't doing too hot financially, but it's nice to uh, see they're coming back up now. Oh, yeah, I'm excited for uh, for GOG Galaxy 2.0. I've been waiting. I signed up for the beta. Where is it? Send me an email because it looks cool. All my stuff will be in one place. Um, even, uh, even Epic CEO Tim Sweeney congratulated GOG on Twitter um, about how um, it's going to bring bring everything together. Um I really, really want GOG uh, 2.0. I want to try it out. Exactly. GOG is doing a awesome job. And I was just on there the other day after they you know, announced that we could pre-order. And they were like, hey, just pre-order it from us. And we give the money right to the Cyberpunk team. And I was like, heck yeah, I want to do that. Pre-order Cyberpunk. Yeah, boys. Yeah. Pre-order I, Cyberpunk. Yeah, I'll probably get it from them too. I don't think I'll pre-order it, but I'll get it from GOG. Um, just a... Hey, just a side thought on Cyberpunk. I didn't put it in the notes, but I remember seeing it. You won't be able to kill children or NPCs that are important to the storyline in Cyberpunk. Okay, so I guess that's good. You know, you won't accidentally kill somebody and then freak out because you can't finish the story. Uh, in Bloodborne, I remember uh, you can kill somebody, but they come back to life. Um, which doesn't really happen to anyone else in the game. And it would have sucked because if you killed this person and they wouldn't come back to life, you wouldn't really be able to progress. So it's good to know that, you know, you won't be able to screw yourself over. I'm sure some weirdo out there is like, but I want to kill kids. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't want to kill kids, so. they Everything I keep hearing about Cyberpunk is turning out to just be... Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, just... super big open world. Cyberpunk aesthetic. You can't murder children. I mean, what can you ask for? It looks like it's got fast, frenetic gameplay. GOG is getting a lot of money from it. You can't kill children. That's right. I do like GOG. I'm glad that GOG is around. I'd rather give GOG my money than Steam. No? No, I give everything to Steam. Okay. Steam is Steam is my lord. Ah, I see. Yes. I'm just going to go to the Church of Epic then. Oh my gosh. Not moving really. on, moving uh, on to Polygon. Nintendo has finally revealed the Switch Lite after months of lies. Of lies and trickery. Nintendo has finally admitted that they are coming out with a Nintendo Switch Lite. Why did they lie to us? You know? Because they weren't ready to tell. They could have just been like, we're making it. We're doing it. I know, but it's out now. You can check it out. It's all over the internet. Yeah. Everybody and their grandma was making a video about it, talking about it, doing it. Bloomba, I, I mean, man, I remember we talked about this. We've talked about this on and off for months now. Uh, Wall Street Journal has come out with it. Bloomberg came out with a report about it. Eurogamer came out with a report about it. And Jordan was talking about how, um, what is what is Nintendo doing? And I was just like, they're lying. They're, they're lying. Yeah. I was just like, just tell us, man. Just be honest. So, we have some uh, some information about the Switch Lite, though. Exactly. It's going to be $199.99 USD. Convert that to whatever your currency is. It's going to be, that's $100 cheaper than the original Switch. It is going to be available worldwide on September 20th. And for those of you Pokeballers out there, yes, there will be a special... Man, I don't know how to say their names, but I'm going to try it anyway. Z Zerkarian and Zama 
Okay. Uh, I would say Zacian and Zamazenta. Okay. Maybe. Edition will be released November eighth. I don't need this, but I want that Pokemon edition. I don't. It's fine. It's cool. I'm, I'm back. I get on the back. I guess. What I like is the uh, buttons, yeah. and the uh, the blue and pink. I like that too. button colors, though. That's what I like. So, just for those of you that are uh, curious, it does. Uh, it just does come with the. Oh my gosh! What words. are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that it's not a game bundle. That the Pokemon oh, Special oh. Edition Nintendo Lite is not a game bundle. It's just the Switch. It's not the game. Okay, okay. It does, not, it does not include a copy of Pokemon Sword or Pokemon Shield pre-installed. So, there's for those of you that aren't going to get the Pokemon Edition, there is going to be, it's going to be available in three colors. So, it's going to be yellow, gray, or turquoise. Which color are you going to get? Probably the Pokemon one. I'm going to get uh, my Switch and just play my Switch because I already have a Switch. Good point. Good man. Obviously, this is going to be... Okay, oh, we should probably mention that this is not going to be able to connect to your TV. You cannot um, un undo the. You can't switch it. You can't detach the Joy Cons. The Joy Cons are attached. You can also not switch. Uh, there's no merged accounts. So if you already own a Switch, you can't use the same account on. Yeah, accounts are abound. But you can play the same games. You can play the same games. No, no, I'm talking about you can play your the games that you own on the Switch. Correct. Yes. So what do you mean? It's but you of... you can't uh, you can't. There's not like cross save between. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, there's I, not. I heard that they were talking about maybe trying that. Yeah. But if you're gonna go from taking it like from, why not just have a normal Switch if you want to have yeah. it cross? Exactly. So. What's what hasn't changed though is uh, both the games will still run like if you have cartridges or digital they'll both still run on the Switch Lite. They both support Wi-Fi, NFC, which means they'll work with your amiibos, Bluetooth, gyroscope. Uh, the Switch Lite is compatible with all Switch controllers. Uh, Joy that's that being Joy Cons Pro Controller, the Pokeball Plus. And they both start, uh, it does come with 32 gigs of storage with an expansion for a micro SD card. Yeah, um, there will be a few games, uh, it doesn't seem like there's going to be many, that you're not going to be able to play on there because you need the uh, the Joy-Cons to yeah. come off. Um, like, um, what you call it, 1-2 uh, Switch. I don't know anyone who plays that game, but it doesn't appear that that's going to be playable on the Switch Lite. Um, it says it's going to be thirty one percent lighter than the original Switch, which is which is significant. The screen is smaller; it's five point five inches rather than the six point two inches of the original Switch. So it's and, the, uh, and uh, lastly, there is going to be no HD one feature. All of these uh, features being taken out is why they're going to be uh, it's going to be a hundred dollars cheaper. Also, it's not going to have a dock, so that makes yeah. sense. I think Nintendo is about to make a shed load of money on this. Oh, yeah. Um, um, oh, also, there's going to be a proper D-pad instead of the like button D-pad layout they have here. But, yeah, they're, they're cutting costs to the bare minimum. They're probably going to sell a billion of these things. Last thing is Nintendo told Polygon the Switch Lite no longer has an automatic brightness sensor, although users can still control brightness manually. And also, the Switch Lite has a slightly improved battery life compared to uh, the original Switch that has three to seven hours, depending on the game played. Okay. Wow, this, yeah, this article is long enough. I, I never had a big problem with my Switch's battery. I, I know some people did. Nintendo also came out, uh, did you see this? Well, they're saying that this is not meant to end the 3DS or kill the 3DS. As soon as they... Just put it, just put it out of its misery, man. It's... It's, it's dead. bleeding out. It's crawling across the floor. It's it's just asking, man. It's not gonna live. You might as well just just put a bullet in it. As soon as they announced this trailer, it that was the coffin. Oh yeah. That got put into the cremation chamber. That got scattered, ashes to the wind. Dead. Like. I love my 3ds. I still play my 3ds. I'm a weirdo though. I own a 3ds. I don't love it. 
I just have it. You don't love it. No. The 3DS is one of the greatest consoles of all time. I don't disagree. I just don't love it. Don't love it. It was there. I had it. It was okay. It was just eh for me. Do you have any games you want to give me? Because you clearly hate it. No, I sold them all. Or they're you, digital. you still have Pokemon Conquest? Yeah. So you didn't sell them. Sorry, I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm no, a liar. But I think that this is the, the Jordan Dry. This is the nail in the Just coffin. This is the final nail. No, despite what Nintendo says, this there's no way. Who Who is buying... Who is buying a 3DS? Also, who is buying like a 3DS Lite or a 2DS? I get children, you know, parents and children. Parents, if you're listening to this... First of all, welcome. Second of all, okay. Just, so I will say that you can probably get a 3ds Lite or 2ds for super cheap, and by and and, a, and it comes the 3ds has one of the greatest libraries probably of all time. So I, I mean, if, so if you wanted to buy like a an Xbox One S and a 2ds, you could get some incredible games and and a pretty good price. I will say. I was gonna say parents should just buy their. Children in the Nintendo Switch. I mean, that's why Nintendo's releasing the, the Switch Lite. Because if I was a kid nowadays, I'd much rather have a Switch than a 3... Here's a 3DS! I don't want this. Give me a Switch. My gosh, you're ungrateful, little kid. <laughs> My mom'd be like, sit down, boy! Well, I realized... Take this 3DS! I realized a couple weeks ago that I was spoiled. I think, I think a lot of people... I mean, I was spoiled. I was definitely yeah. spoiled. Yeah, I was thinking that the other day because I was I went to look for something. That, and I was like, "Why don't we own this?" And I was like, "But that being said, if I would gone up to my mom and been like, give me a switch,' she probably would have, you know, slapped me outside the head." Yeah, and you would have ate your teeth for dinner. No, I would have eaten like spaghetti or whatever she made for dinner, but she would have, you know, popped the little, you know, <laughs> shut up, boy, you know. That's right. Some you cr- get that for Christmas or whatever. Santa will bring it to you. Santa, Santa, baby, come down. But and yeah, um, I would, my my point was there's a lot of games with the 3ds, and also the Xbox One S has got the game the Games Pass, um, combo thing is really cool, interesting. Um, that purple one looks really good too, but um, that's off topic. Um, I understand what you're saying. You know, you want the new cool, hip thing. You want to snap. Um, but, uh, at the same time, there's, there's not as many games on the Switch, it's more expensive, it's not as portable. I get what you, I get what you're coming from. And this is more portable, and this is cheaper, but, you know, look at it from both perspectives. It's like jazz, you know, man, you gotta let it flow. I know. I'm that just... made no sense. Let's move on. So, Android Central gave us an article that's about supermassive. Android Central gave us this? That's weird. Yeah. Okay. So, Supermassive's Man of Medin. Man, man of Medan, Man of Medan, Man of Yeah. Medan. I don't. I don't know. Has multiplayer, and there's eight games planned for the Dark Pictures Anthology. Okay, so I am excited about this. Are you excited about this? I don't know what the Dark Pictures Anthology is. Okay, so first of all, I know I talk about this a lot. But I I feel like Supermassive is another studio that Sony should have bought. They didn't buy them, and they should have. But I don't want to spend too much time on that. So Man of Medan and the Dark Picture Anthology. This is the creators of Until Dawn. They are making um, more of these quote-unquote walking simulator type games. Um, and they're going to make eight games, and they're going to be anthologies. That's what the Dark Picture Anthology is. Um, this multiplayer looks really, really cool. Um, did you watch this video? I haven't, no. You haven't, so you don't know what the multiplayer is. Nope. Okay, we're back, and I've watched the video. <laughs> and I can say that I'm interested in Supermassive Games, the Dark Pictures, Mad of Midden, and no one is making me say this against my will. Okay, so do you? Since you just watched it, what do you think? That's way cooler than I thought it was gonna be. It looks like it, I don't. I can't tell how 
but you're somehow going to be able to affect other people's games. I think you play together. So in the trailer, it shows, you know, you can play solo. And then it said like a two to five person player movie night sort of a thing. So I don't know if you'll be able to connect with other people. And then there's obviously the co-op where you'll be able to uh, just play with a friend okay. yeah, or a stranger. Yeah, that makes sense. It would be cool to play and have, I guess, it would be like you're playing a horror movie. Yeah. With a, with a group of, like, dumb teenagers, if you want to call them that, you know? Yeah, that'd be really cool. And especially if there's, say, you know, there's two or three people playing or two people, however many people playing, and then your other friends are spectating. And so it's just like you're all together hanging out, enjoying a horror movie. Uh, so yeah, that be... sounds really cool. Um and then um, we talked about how there's going to be eight managing direct uh, eight games in the uh, in the anthology. Um, managing director Pete Samuels was asked about the number of games, and he said, "Quote: Well, the second one is well into production." Samuels answered, counting off numbers on his fingers. So we know what that is. Third one is going to end off its design phase in writing, and we're shooting that with the cast in two weeks' time to get all that. In the fourth one, I think we have a concept of the movements and design. The fifth one we're working on, and we have the concept and are about to move into design. But we know what the horror story is also for the sixth, seventh, and eighth, end quote. That is incredible that they are essentially working on eight individual games at the same time. Well, I wouldn't say at the same time, but yeah, they they have eight games, I guess, in different levels of development some of them are just kind of talking about the concept some of them they're talking about the story and they're back they just about have uh this medan one out the door but yeah that is i mean it's it is impressive this is it's a lot of games i'm super excited until dawn is fantastic and if these games keep up the um the quality of that that would be incredible the dark pictures man of medan will release on october sorry august 30th 2019 by the way Oh man, it would make sense for October, but they gotta get August. I know. I don't know why. That's weird. So I'm, I will, I will be playing this. I don't know who I'm gonna play with. Maybe, oh, maybe you, you and Jake. That'd be fun. Maybe I don't know. I don't know if I'll play by myself or with others. That's true too. You know, I haven't played a good horror game in a while. I think it's time for me to do it. There's a lot of good ones out there right now. That's true. That is true. There are a lot of good horror games. So this next article is it's interesting it's coming from the verge amazon is developing a lord of the rings mmo and it is taking place before a long time before apparently the events of lord of the rings so for those of you that don't know amazon is they are working with Leyu. And Leiu is the company that owns Warframe, Developer Digital Extremes, and Amazon Game Studios as well. And they're going to be... And Amazon's already super deep in development with its first MMO, A New World, which they're still waiting to release information on. But going back into the world of Lord of the Rings, it's not the first MMO that's coming out for Lord of the Rings. Uh, There was Lord of the Rings Online that's been around since about 2007. Yeah, apparently they still had they had an update last year. So apparently people are still playing it. I part of me is sort of interested in this, mostly because I do enjoy Lord of the Rings and that universe. I wouldn't say I couldn't I don't think I could name more than five characters sort of a thing or tell you tons of the lore or what the swords names are or whatever. Uh, but I, I'm interested in seeing what this is going to be. It's definitely, the Lord of the Rings is one of those universes that I would like to get into. Um, it's very interesting. I would like to read the books and play the games. I know I love the movies. The movies are great. But um, I tried reading, a, it might have been The Hobbit, years and years ago. But um, it was a little too wordy for me. But I, I want, I'd like to try it again, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like we said, this is an MMO set at, quote, a long time before the events of Lord of the Rings, exploring lands, people, and creatures never seen before by fans of the Tolkien universe. So, when I read that, when I read that, I was like, I kind of thought to myself, does that mean that they're all new creatures, or did it literally mean seen? As in, they haven't been in the movies or in the video games yet. That's how I took it. Or it could be in the sense of they're just 
it's just new things they imagined and yeah. they want to explain. I mean, to Tolkien's us. universe is so deep. I don't know if they would need to. Exactly. Um, this did we mention that this is going to be free to play? We did not. Uh, but other than that, there's no other details on when Amazon expects to release this MMO or on which consoles it'll be available. But we will let you know when more details come out. I mean, I, I assume PC. Um, that's got to be. It, oh yeah. I mean, and I would think that they would want it to be on um, PC, Xbox, and uh, PS4 at the very least. True. So, but this is a free-to-play title, like Brian said. I will. Uh, I'm gonna keep my nose to the ground about this one. Yeah, I still can't get... I know you like MMOs. I clearly cannot get into them, though. I am always searching for an MMO to just get a whole bunch of friends into. And yes, I know I could play the Final Fantasy one, but there's just something about it. I'm looking for, like, the perfect MMO, which I don't... You know, it might not exist. It you might... played Maple Story. You didn't have to tell the new listeners that. <laughs> Did you, you ever get into... Uh... In the Maple Story too, I did get into it for about an hour, and then I realized that it wasn't for me. Even though I do like anime, and some people do call me a weeaboo, and I like MMOs, I just I couldn't do Maple Story too, and I kind of feel bad about it. You feel? Why do you feel bad? Because I I wanted to get into the beta for so long, and then I finally got into it, and I played it, and now it, it just didn't. It was just boring. I think it's because I didn't have friends to play with. Oh, yeah. You definitely need friends with MMO in, in, a, in, a, in an MMO. So, I'm always looking for MMO to play with friends and then you know trying to get people to download it. So, maybe I'll just jump back into Warframe. Be like, God, like, hey, man, download this game. Yeah. It's definitely not a virus. Yeah. That's, that's me sometimes. Uh, but then it's also some other friends like, hey, try this new game that's coming out. What do you think of this? And we're always, you know, talking about different uh, trailers and stuff that's out. When do you think this is going to come out? And sometimes it never comes over here. And we don't want to have to do the whole VPN rigmarole. So. I mean, there's, you could get, there's, there's definitely a few big ones. But if you don't want to play those, I guess you're out of luck. I don't... Yeah, well, we like, my group likes, uh, like, MMOs, obviously. Yeah, anime! Yeah, call it what you want. I really see. I'm like the exact. I'm completely, t- um, I guess turned off of the by the w- super weeaboo aesthetic. I kind of hate it. It's okay. I know. I'm just not. I wasn't me. asking for for acceptance. I, I'm. <laughs> I, I, it's okay. So something that's not okay to a lot of people. Psychonauts 2 has been delayed to a 2020 release date so they can, quote, make it as good as possible. And I didn't play the first one. I owned the first one. You sound so disappointed. <laughs> you, didn't even, you didn't even play it. <laughs> I, <laughs> he said, I, mean, I didn't play the first one. I don't have any, any stakes in this. <laughs> and they said they want to make the game good, but... I just, I can't, you know. We're now, ta- they said, we're now targeting next year for release. The studio wrote an update, quote, we, all, we know it's always disappointing for you when you have to wait a bit longer, but we also know that you're an amazing, supportive bunch who, just like us, want the game to be as good as possible. So hopefully you'll understand, end quote. Uh, I I think I had the first one. I think they gave it away on Epic or something. Yeah, one of those services. Um. Yeah, I have no idea. It, they, they didn't say whether or not it was because of their acquisition by Microsoft, and it seems like it's still going to be coming to the same platforms that it was going to. So, I mean, I think this is just another instance of them taking a while to make the game. Yeah. So, it's... People love Psychonauts. This game reminds me of Shinmu as far as the fan base. It's <laughs> a super old game. That if you went back and played, maybe it's not that good. But maybe I don't know. I don't know. I own it. I it's it's very low on my uh, list of games that I will play. It's in my like side side list. Yeah. Yeah, I got my list, and it's it's not on there. No, it's not even on my list. It's uh, it's can't do it. And I have both border, not Borderlands, uh, Bioshocks. I need to play. 
Yes, played those before. There's three power tracks, though. Yeah, I think there's... Isn't there like five, four? No, there's, there's three. Oh, okay. Got when it. I said there's three. I can't, I can't, I can't listen or count or read. <laughs> I ain't gonna listen to you. Uh, yeah, I got those off uh, Discord for free. What the heck is this? What? It's a... Five Emblems, Three Houses, Opening Cinematic? Ooh. Wait, did you... Did I click on the wrong thing? I think you clicked on the wrong thing. We're supposed to be oh, I think I yes, I definitely did. Okay, so Call of Duty Call Modern of Duty Warfare, Warfare. greatest series inside of Texas. <laughs> Thank you, GameSpot, for this. So powerful and so thin. It's a whole new realm in gaming. This podcast is sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, what do you now? What? Well, it's a two v two gun mode. Oh yeah, that's that's what the story is. They, they they have revealed a new mode titled Gunfight. Ooh, Gunfight! It, uh, the, when they first saw that, it reminded me of the I forgot what it's called. It was an Advanced Warfare. It's where you started with a combat knife and then you went as you got more kills you got like a pistol and then you got another kill and it gave you a different gun that's in every game every call of duty game really yeah oh okay it's called gun game it's nothing like gun game dang it did you also not watch this i did read this one i promise it's, it's not like gun game in the I slightest know. okay so this is going to be um a 2v2 mode where you and a teammate play against two other people. That's right. That's what 2v2 means. It is going to, uh, you're going to be randomly assigned um, a weapon set. Each team and each player is going to have the same weapon set. And you're going to have, what, two minutes or so? Yeah, about, uh, so gun matches or gunfights, match runs on a timer of 40 seconds. 40 seconds. That's nowhere near two minutes. I don't know where and I if got you And if you haven't wiped minutes. out the opposing team by then, a flag appears in the center of the and center map on the first team to capture that flag wins. No, you had to no. You had to hold you had to capture it and hold it for three seconds. Got it. Thank you. And what that is is gonna be uh, the first team to take down six round wins wins the whole match. Okay, okay. There's gonna be three maps and they're going to include oh uh, Pine, Stack, and King. Pine is going to be a forest, stack a container yard, and king a warehouse. Yeah. So, you know, you got some variety right there. Also, there's going to be a... It looks like there's going to be a lot of ever-changing loadouts, so you never know what you're going to get since it is random. Yeah, I like how everyone... Uh, it's, it's random, but also everyone has the same gear. Yeah, so it's not like, oh, they got a better gun than me, you know? So yeah. it's unlike... I mean, I love gun games. But sometimes, if you get a gun or two behind, it can kind of feel like there's no catching up. Mm -hmm. uh, with this, this is actually a mode that's pretty interesting to me. I don't think I'm gonna pick it, pick this game up, but I, I think it's good for people that want to just, you know, hang out with your friends and play some Call of Duty. Oh man, dude! I think I might buy this game just for this mode alone. This, this sounds really cool to me. Super quick, fight of uh, like fast, um, quick. I'd say quick. Firefights. Already. Firefights, yeah. Uh, there's games that are over quickly is what I was trying to uh, say. Uh, that and the, and the fact that the the uh, campaign looks really cool from what I've heard. And it's going to be crossplay. And I have a bunch of people that play on Xbox. So uh, I am I am super, super excited for this Call of Duty, actually. By the time you finish that ring of sentences, I realized that you weren't sarcastic. But when no, you, I'm not sarcastic but, at all. But when you first said that uh, you wanted to get this game, I was... 70% sure you were being sarcastic. I, mean, I liked Black Ops 4. Um, I thought it played really well. I've always thought Call of Duty played really well. Um, but it got kind of boring. Yeah. And then Black Ops 4 kind of... I think it did uh, something... I think it did multiplayer well for the first time for me in a while. Um, I liked the Blackout. Um, especially with the newest update, that the, or the, one of the newer updates, where you can play on um, uh, that prison. Oh, Alcatraz. Alcatraz, thank you. You're welcome. That super small map. That's one of my biggest problems with Blackout is the map is so freaking huge and you wouldn't run into anybody. I mean, at least it was like that 
after the game was out for a while, you know, it had kind of died down a little bit. The map was massive. You couldn't find anybody. I'd get bored, and I'd get popped in the back of the head because I wasn't paying attention anymore. So um, this is kind of the opposite of that. Super quick, fast rounds with only a couple people. There's also rumored that there's going to be multiple versions. Like, I heard that there's going to be, or I heard that it, there is a rumor of a 10v10. So um, I'm very excited. There's no, there's not going to be any kill streaks, um, which I kind of hate. Um, I know some people were mad that kill streaks I think were gone in the new one. So I was, I was glad about that. But I think they're going to come back. So I'm kind of disappointed about that. But I'm more excited about this Call of Duty than probably since like I don't know a long time. A okay. Long time. Nice. I kind of lost faith in Call of Duty because it got so boring and repetitive. For me, so this is exciting for me. Okay, nice. Maybe I'll jump on that. Probably not, though. But this next news comes from Polygon. The last news. The last the news. Week. Overwatch's summer games will arrive a little early. And there's some news about Hero 31, which is going to be a little late. That's that's the news. You said the news. I did? Yes. That's, that's it. The, that's all. That's literally the news. Um, it's, they Jeb Kaplan uh, confirmed that uh, it's going to be a man. He said he is going to be awesome. Um, so that's about all we know, and we know that's going to be later than normal. Yeah, I mean, Baptiste did just show up in March, and they also had a brief developer update. Isn't that long since Baptiste? Mm -hmm. Holy crap! I thought, I thought it was like two weeks ago. No. Uh, they also, in their developer update, they talked about, they touch on anti-cheat measures, and Kaplan says that the new cheat detection model will shut down matches in which foul play is detected, but that no players on either side of the match will have their skill rating affected by suspected cheaters. Sorry, yeah, by sus suspected cheaters. Well, that's good. So, and I, you know, who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe we'll get something that's different than Lucio Ball this year. Probably not. Probably not. Oh no 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 no! What am I talking? No, we're definitely not going to get anything else. What am I talking about? What? No, we're not. Gonna, we're going to get Lucio gonna, Ball again. It's going to be the exact same event. Overwatch needs to change their events, man. They're so boring. I like Lucio Ball, but it's kind of boring that they do nothing else besides that. Exactly. Here, Lucio Ball. Uh, that's pretty much it for the news, the new games, what we've been playing, how's we've been doing, and everything else. We appreciate you listening, as always. We hope you subscribe and tell your friends about the show. Leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to the podcast. You can listen to it anywhere, even on Pandora now. That's right. Pandora, get so, it done. That's right. We're that's, on, Pand that's Pandora's slogan, get it done. That's right. You can listen to One Up Me Podcast on Pandora, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast. And wherever else you enjoy podcasts. And if we're not on there, let us know and we'll do our darndest to get on there. Unless you listen to podcasts on SoundCloud, then we will not be doing that. Unless they want to sponsor us and pay us to put our podcast on there. That's the only way we're going to put our podcast on SoundCloud. And uh, if you want to reach out to the show, you're more than welcome to. At Want Me Podcast on Twitter. You can reach out to me at Swaylock. You can reach out to Ryan at Ryan Divisions on Twitter. You can email the show, Podcast at gmail.com. We also have an Instagram, Wanna Be Gaming, on Instagram if you want to check us out on there. We have a Discord server that's in the description. We have a Reddit that's in the description. Join either one of those communities. Honestly, though, mainly just subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or Pandora and leave us a review. That's the main two things. That is also true. If you don't want to join the Discord, neither do I. That's true. <laughs> it's, it's just me. It's just me. Oh, yeah. uh, no. But um, seriously, um, subscribe. I have a review for you. You ready? Yes. This is on Persona 4 Golden. You're talking about we've been we've been talking about playing this uh, lately. This is a zero out of ten. Oh man, I love these. Some of these I feel like you know they're fake because they're so outrageous. But just this just, just listen. Quite possibly the worst JRPG in the history of gaming. Old, outdated gameplay. Very bad graphics. You, you might actually go blind from the awful design. I do not recommend it all. That has to be a fake review. I feel like they just typed a bunch of nonsense. But what's no, their... No, no, I feel like that that's... I don't think that's fake at all. 
Were they were they talking about the original? No, this is Persona 4 Golden. Why did you think they they were talking? Would that be okay if they were talking about the original? I, eh, it depends on when they played it. Uh, what do you mean? Because it's well, I mean, you, you it's kind of like when you first played it, you were complaining to me about the graphics. Yeah, then I aged to it. So. But I mean, don't just don't be a graphics whore. Yeah, that's true. So I'll... Persona 4 Golden, the remake on the PS Vita, has a 93. Uh, Metacore, Meta score, yeah, Metacritic oh, score, Metacritic score. Um, I'm interested to see what the original has. Okay, well, while he looks up that Persona Four score, I am gonna tell you to yes, stay safe. It has a four. I mean, I mean, it has a ninety. Okay, a ninety. Well. And as always, stay safe. Came out on 2008 on the PS2. Really? It's a really late PS2 game. All right. Well, stay safe and play on, and don't forget to subscribe.